bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. Welcome back. The best and brightest in this country's tourism sector honored this past weekend as the 17th Kasik Awards was held in New Providence. It was a spectacular moment for Grand Bahama finalists, five of whom walked away with top honors. Our ZNS News team was on hand Sunday afternoon at the domestic section of the Freeport Airport when the winners returned home to a hero's welcome. From West End Grand Bahama's Rogana Wilshkem of Stratacular Designs secured the Kasik for Handicraft. Bahamian musician Phil Stubbs won the Blue Ribbon Panel Award. Wilfred Willie Love Knowles was posthumously awarded as the first recipient of the Cacique named in his honor. And the Tourism Minister's Award went to veteran musician Wilfred Solomon. Human Resource Development Cacique winner Evelyn Pinder Dames of Grand Bahama says they were all humbled to win. It's an awesome feeling to be bringing it back home for Grand Bahama and especially our Western Craft Association. Um, all the fans throughout the Bahamas and throughout America and all over the world, this is Wilfred Salmon bringing it home. And I am very, very happy to be coming all the way from Freeport representing Freeport. An awesome experience. And, you know, my husband, who's been my greatest supporter um, in everything, who always assisted with the students when I work with them. I, I just can't say thank you enough, and I'm overwhelmed with joy. Director of Tourism on Grand Bahama, Betty Bethel, says for these finalists to be named among the best in the country is indeed significant. It, happy it's this shot in the arm that we needed to just boost morale and confidence in our destination um, our finalists were awesome we went down with 10 persons a group of 10 who made it to the finalists two of which were a pair and then to come out with five wins I think is absolutely amazing and we want to say congratulations to all of our Kasik winners. Grand Bahamas economy getting a significant boost recently as a mega faith-based conference was held at the Grand Lucayan Resort. Officials say the event not only lived up to its billing as a spiritual encounter, but paid off in a major way for a local resort owner. Megan Shepard reports. Faith Fest 2017 officially in the history books, and the record will show that the event was a huge success for the island of Grand Bahama, despite the major setback known as Hurricane Matthew. Manager of Religious Tourism Debbie Heiler says, in the wake of the hurricane, organizers helped turn tragedy into triumph, as host Bishop Henry Fernandez was determined to bring the event to the island. Heiler says she knows that it was certainly a blessing for many. I would want to say that Grand Bahama was blessed because of this initiative. Um, it generated income for our people. You know, we heard stories about persons who, since the hurricane, this was the first time they worked. And you know, it really touched our hearts on that last sun Sunday morning to hear some of the testimonies. But again, we say to God be the glory because we know that God was in it. One of the major sponsors for the event, owner of Apex International, Emil Jarrett says that his organization is a faith-based one and his success is all due to his personal relationship with the Lord. He says once the opportunity was presented, there was no question about his support. We were certainly challenged because of the Hurricane Matthew and that occurred. They contacted us to find out whether or not we still wanted to, um, we wanted a refund. But we thought that uh, we would leave that seed in place and uh, see it come to fruition. And certainly it did. This island was blessed as a result. And uh, we had an opportunity to rub shoulders with uh, persons of like precious faith. And so for everyone, it was a blessing. Now, as a part of a sponsorship, one lucky winner won a special prize via a raffle drawing. Initially, it was designed to be a five-day, four-night uh, drawing, but we've added a few bells and whistles, uh, which would be an additional couple of days, so we'll make it a week, 
long stay and so some lucky recipient today will win a week long stay the lucky winner of the raffle drawing is dolores webb out of florida megan shepherd said in s network news it's time now to ask the doctor hi and welcome today we'd like to continue our discussion of depression putting the focus on depression in men depression occurs in men women, and even children. But while it may create the same kind of hopelessness and sadness in both men and women, experience have taught us that men may experience depression in a different way. Many men do not demonstrate emotions outwardly. They try to present the facade of the strong silent type. This can often cause signs of depression to be overlooked. Common signs include a lack of interest in activities that the person used to enjoy, a change in eating habits, increase in the number of headaches, stomach aches, and physical symptoms, constant fatigue, and an inability to relax or sleep, or sleeping too much. Men are also less likely to seek help, even if they think that they are depressed. If you suspect a man in your life is depressed, talk about it. Mental health professionals recommend that as you talk with him, demonstrate understanding, patience, and affection, as well as encouragement. Point out signs that he really might be depressed and offer hope that he can improve what he is feeling and going through with care and treatment. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. Don't go away, sports is up next with Ricardo Lightborn. Register and be ready for, for the elections, and the Prime Minister has to do what he has to do because this, this time. Now the call for the election so that we can get us over with and deal with the country's work business. You know, and, and sometimes you have to move swiftly, sometimes you have to take your time. But I think this is a time to move and this is all parliament so that we can get this election over the way.